From shallow water reefs to the mysterious deep, Ocean X is on a mission to explore the ocean and bring it back to the world. Here's a look into the science capabilities in our vessel, Ocean Explorer, which will allow us to conduct groundbreaking research. Ocean Explorer 1 is a paradigm shift. It views ocean exploration in a different way. In order to go to these very remote locations on the Earth and study in these very hostile situations, one needs a very advanced technological vessel that can carry enough people and enough of these modern tools to those locations to explore them in ways that have never been explored before. We have this ocean research vessel called the Lucia, which we've been running for several years. Over that time, we began to realize some things we'd really love to have. So we began this kind of imagineering stage where we started, you know, wishing and hoping about what we want. There's a worldwide movement happening right now because we need to know more about the oceans and protect them. Human activities are beginning to dramatically impact the health of the ocean. At the same time, technology has allowed us to study parts of the ocean, explore parts of the ocean we never could do before. So in order to do that, we had to build a vessel that was capable of this extreme oceanography and marine biology and ocean exploration, the deepest parts of the ocean, uh, but at the same time, do it in a way that we could capture that in the most beautiful, brilliant storytelling media we could. So to take these amazing things that really only scientists and oceanographers get to see and reveal them to the public. On the new vessel, we created fully independent launch systems. So we can simultaneously launch a submersible, a remote operated robot, and we can launch a helicopter all at the same time. We felt very strongly that having humans in the ocean plays a key role in ocean exploration and storytelling. We all want the audience to see the full arc of the science that's happening. So we've added all these other components in terms of dry laboratories and wet laboratories. The audience will feel that they're right there in the middle of the action. What it's like to be a scientist, what it's like to be a filmmaker, helicopter pilot or a sub-pilot. It's a crucial time right now to have a vehicle like this built with the sole mission of revealing to the world the absolute beauty and grandeur of the ocean. So my hope and dream for this vessel is in 15 years we'll look back and much like space exploration vehicles, we'll see a shift in human knowledge and human understanding about the ocean, but also an enrichment of human life. Ocean Explorer will be a Hubble or a Voyager or a Starship Enterprise. I've been excited to work with the team to design a ship that will be the greatest exploration, scientific research, and media platform to ever sail the ocean. We're really thrilled because with Ocean Explorer's maiden voyage, we'll be launching this new series in partnership with BBC and James Cameron that will be airing on National Geographic to venture into some of the least explored parts of the Indian Ocean. At the moment, uh, the vessel is standing on uh, big concrete blocks. And uh, today we are going to talk about one of the most important milestones of the project, floating of the vessel and undocking of the vessel. What could go wrong? Well, of course, uh, we could have a leakage on board. You will never know. That's why we do this filling up in dock in certain steps. First, we do a complete hull integrity check. The water comes from our uh, harbor, so from the canal. We have two big valves in front of the dock, which will be opened, and the water starts coming in slowly. The amount of water, I don't know, it's enormous. <laughs> and at a certain moment, the vessel will come loose from the dock blocks and starts floating. Once the, the dock is filled with water and the vessel is floating, we can open up the really big dock door and then the vessel can leave the dry dock. O 
Ocean Explorer will be the most cutting edge, futuristic, inspirational ocean exploration ship on the water. Every detail has been developed by a team of experts. Submariners and scuba divers, filmmakers and scientists, all designed and developed to maximize our ability to explore the world and bring it back to society. Every time I go to work, and not many people on the planet can say this, when I walk into the sub hangar, I still do a double take. Wow, this is my office. We can do every bit of maintenance inside. We've got space for maintaining the cameras, science equipment, new media systems, compared to any other ship that's got submersibles on the planet. This is a complete game changer. Even though I am a marine biologist, it's a pretty rare opportunity to get to work with such advanced equipment, like our custom-built ROV. We can literally take a sample from 6,000 meters underneath the surface of the ocean. We can bring that sample in here, sequence its full genome, and we can discover whether it's a new species or not. Having everything together on this vessel allows us to go from exploration all the way to discovery in the same context. We have the capability to go to a brand new area which nobody has ever been to, and we'll map it with our acoustic equipment. We can go from knowing nothing to understanding a whole new ecosystem all from this boat. We built it in mind for media and science at 6,000 meters. The reason is that within 6,000 meter range, you'd cover 98% of the ocean. We've only discovered and explored a fraction of our world's oceans. There's so much more to learn about and to uncover that will have huge scientific implications. We desperately need the next generation of curious young people to look into that world and say, I want to explore that, I want to learn about that world. I've been involved with uh, previous research projects using the EK-80 where we were looking for whales in the Antarctic. It's really a very sophisticated fish finder. And so we knew if we found a krill swarm, hey, there's a bunch of food that we're, for the whales we're looking for. If we found a lot of krill, it's likely we would eventually find whales. My name is Julian Race. I am the science and technology officer on the research vessel Ocean Explorer. I'd probably say to my tiny niece that uh, I'm a fancy computer guy on a research vessel in the middle of the ocean, helping scientists do their job. And this here is the acoustic gondola. The gondola, if you can think about it, is this small little area at the bottom front of the ship where we pack all of our sensors that are letting us listen and look at the seafloor. So here in the gondola, running the length of it, is our deep water multi-beam sonar. What you're going to be seeing is the contours of the seafloor. So large rocks, uh, valleys, seamounts, um, shipwrecks, basically features on the seafloor or part of the seafloor, you'll be able to identify them. It'll end up looking like a high resolution three dimensional map. And that's really important because we can look for interesting features that might be driving things like upwelling currents, which can then drive nutrients to the surface. And then if you identify a target that is potentially causing upwelling with the local currents, you might then pick that spot and then go over it with the EK-80 and see what kind of fish are congregating in that you know, nutrient-rich water. And then our six-channel EK-80 system here. In most cases, what you're looking for is the prey of the megafauna you're looking for. Say we were looking for um, right whales, we might be looking for krill, so we could target something about that big. Or if we're looking for tooth whales, like sperm whales, maybe we go looking for big fish that they might be eating. 
Then we've got our two ADCP current, me current measurement devices here. Anytime we're in an operation, we're trying to measure the ocean currents. One that's just an important data set that we want to contribute to the global oceanographic community. The, the sub-dive team is always looking at those, those ocean currents, and that's a big, big part of their dive planning. Our 12 kilohertz sub-bottom profiler, we can use it for bottom finding, just seeing what the bottom depth is very, very accurately. But we can also use it, turn up the power a little bit, and we can see through the bottom to what the substrate is. So we can see not only the water is 1,000 meters deep, but we can see it's 1,000 meters deep with what looks like 10 meters of sand, or 10 meters of mud, or it's rock, or it's coral. So the sub-bottom profile is important because then we can tie what we found with our multi-beam, which is the contours, with then what is that contour. Different species have different habitats. So if we're looking for species that live in sand, hey, we found some sand. If we're looking for species that live in rocky outcrops, we can find that as well. And so we placed the acoustic gondola way up here in the bow of the ship, and you can see it's actually sitting quite a bit below the bottom of the ship. And so this is to isolate it from the rest of the ship, from things like ship noise, engine noise, vibrations. And it also puts it way forward of the ship because the quieter that these instruments are, the better the quality data we're going to get out of them. Exploring something that is completely unexplored. This is my, this is my future. <laughs>And then, before my first year of university, there was this poster with an oceanographic vessel, and I was like, what is this? In my mind, maybe uh, there is a sort of, I don't know, click, <laughs> let's say, I have to be on that boat. I'm in love with this uh, instrument, and I am in love with this kind of job, I want to do that. <laughs>
when we get to the bottom, we start video in the sea floor and she'll see something and then we'll bring the ROV up to it. She'll identify it and give us sort of a thumbs up whether she wants to collect it or not. And then we'll use the manipulator arm and gently bring it into the chamber pot. The ability to direct the pilot on which samples to collect and then to physically see those samples come up to the surface and then to be able to actually hold something in my hands that came from 1,200 meters was a very big deal for me. Having everything together on this vessel allows us to go from exploration all the way to discovery in the same context. We hope that by showing this huge, exciting, fabulous field component to science, especially ocean science, people will start engaging more with their understanding of what science is and what it can be.